Okay, so I am going to be talking about pre-bloom insects. So this is a blue picture here is a blueberry cluster that I took off one of my two blueberry bushes and you can see the little winter moth caterpillar down at the bottom. It's kind of cute. Okay, so right now, what a crazy uh, last three weeks. Things haven't advanced so much since uh, we were here together last three weeks ago. Um, so really right now is a terrific time to scout for winter moth caterpillars. Uh, if things are at tight cluster or a little bit beyond, buds starting to separate, that's great. Or blueberries, they might look like this, or the, uh, the buds might be a little bit more extended than that. Great time to be looking for caterpillars because the caterpillars are still tiny. Uh, they've been, they've, they did finish hatching, but they have not grown much. Um, when you do go looking for them, you don't often see the caterpillars, but you might see the frass. And so if you see frass, that's as good a, a good enough indication that there's caterpillars inside there. So uh, here's the frass in apples. Uh, this is more blueberries, what a blueberry, you know, I kind of ripped off the top of this blueberry, but you can see the, um, you can see the frass here and the top of the buds. And here, you don't often see the caterpillars, but here's a caterpillar right here. Um, if you poke around long enough, you probably will find it, but not always worth your time. So, as I said, now or when it stops raining will be a great time to to scout for winter moth caterpillars. And then either the next, and then if you decide that you need to spray, you know, the threshold is like about 5% or one in 20 buds with, with uh, caterpillars, which is a pretty conservative uh, spray threshold, I think. Um, but it, so if you, you know, scout very soon, see whether or not you need to spray for, for winter moth. And then the next time you spray, so probably next week will be a good, Really good timing for controlling winter moth. As I've said before, they're pretty darn easy to kill and insecticides such as Dipel, you know, a BT insecticide really works well. And so especially if you feel like that, you know, some of your things are in bloom, some of your varieties are in bloom, then certainly, and, and you feel like you need to spray for winter moth, uh, certainly use a BT insecticide such as Dipel. Uh, so as yeah, so Nova Scotia is saying that about you know one, one to two winter moth damage buds out of twenty is what they consider a threshold, and most growers spray each year for that. So again, there's also I say again because I talked about this three weeks ago, but I realize there's people that are here now that weren't here before. So we actually have two caterpillars. This is the uh, winter moth, and this one is the green pug moth. Uh, so as you can see, they look quite different now, but when they first hatched, they all look pretty darn identical. Actually, it looks a lot like oblique banded leaf roller as well, uh, just a kind of nondescript larva. But then as they grow, and really uh, when they're pretty small, so I picked this, this was from a crab apple tree, picked this yesterday, the, the green pug moth gets this stripe down its back. And as you can see, this is a tiny caterpillar and it, the, the stripe is already visible on the back. So, um, and the green pug moth, we don't think is as damaging as the winter moth. Uh, and the green pug moth, I think, will often tend to be in the leaves rather than in the flowers so much. But if you have a lot of green pug moth, they can do a lot of damage too. So basically, if you see you know, a lot of damage in your fruit buds, then you wanna do something about it. Uh, another thing that we take care of preseason, like to take care of preseason, is European red mite eggs. And here you can see your know, little eggs; they're pretty darn tiny. Um, most of, a lot of you probably have started have put some oil applications on against European red mites, and that's great. Uh, red mites they overwinter as eggs, uh, and then they start hatching around tight cluster right around now, and then they're finished uh, hatching by petal fall. So there is still time to put on an oil application if you want to. Uh, that window is, is uh, coming to a close very soon. So a few eggs may have already hatched, but really at, at this time, uh, right before eggs hatch is when the eggs are most susceptible to being smothered by oil. So it really works, uh, you know, the oil, if you put this on with the next spray, it can, it can do a good job controlling 
uh, red mites. And then of course, if you're using oil, you don't wanna be spraying uh, captan for seven to 10 days after you spray oil. Uh, if you are gonna put, put on oil, um, you wanna reduce the rate down to one gallon per 100 gallons. And um, if you've had problems with San Jose scale, putting on the oil at this time is also helpful to control San Jose scale. For, for pre-bloom mitocides, um, there, there's some really good oviside. So oviscides kill eggs. So the time to apply it, uh, to use an oviside would be at pink. And so the Apollo, Onager, Savvy, and Zeal. And then I guess also, what was that? Magister that is the other mitocide that uh, Jaime just mentioned that is also an oviside. So that, those would be good to use at pink. So re really very, very soon. If so, uh, if you you're not if you're not sure about your your mite your mite control, and actually even if you are sure, you want to go out and check at petal fall for uh, European red mites. And where you want to look is on the underside of leaves, especially like little tufts of leaves. I don't have a good picture of that, but little tufts of leaves that are on like major scaffolding, like Red Delicious and Empires. We know that uh, European red mites do very well on those two varieties. So that's where you wanna scout. You wanna scout there on those varieties and on the, the little spurs that are close to the main branches because that's where the mites will hatch and then get up to the leaves the quickest. And so you really wanna look right on the undersides of the leaves. Um, and if you're finding 30% of, uh, or more of the cluster leaves with some mites, then consider putting on a, a miticide. And at this time, you'll have, it's not so important to use an oviside because there won't be eggs right at petal fall. Um, so you can use one of the other miticides that are listed in the pest management guide. And everybody should have a hand lens uh, to, be looking, to be looking for mites, to be looking for winter moths. There's all sorts of reasons to use a hand lens. Another pre-bloom insect that we have may have problems with is rosy apple aphid. So you can see these um, purple colored aphids that are, that are inside these curled up leaves. You know, our leaves don't look like this yet. This is a little bit more advanced. But rosy apple aphids tend to be worse during cool, wet springs. Uh, kind of reminds me of this one. I have not seen rosy apple aphids uh, this year, but I, have not, I haven't been out that much looking. So, and rosy apple aphids are worse on Portlands and Ida Reds and Golden Delicious. And I think there's some cider varieties too that might be really susceptible to rosy apple aphid. Rosy apple aphid, you know, they curl the leaves, but the real damage is that they, uh, they make the, the fruit malformed and small. Uh, we call them pygmy fruit. And I'm wondering if that's politically correct to call them pygmy fruit. But anyway, that's what we call them. Uh, and if you're going to control rosy apple aphid, it's, you get uh, best control if you do it at, at the pink time, you know, before bloom, uh, before you see the curled leaves. So you really need to get out there and look for them, especially on those varieties that are very susceptible. Uh, rosy apple aphid have developed resistance to uh, many insecticides, um, but look in the, in the pest management guide at netreefruit.org for a list of insecticides. There are just so many new insecticides. Um, new, new like over the last 10 years or so. Uh, also, if you had put on an oil early, say like green tip for, you know, for San Jose scale, that those early uh, oil sprays can also suppress the rosy apple aphid. Tarnished plant bug is another insect we worry about this time of year. Uh, we have not had good Tarnish plant bug weather at all. They really like it above 70 degrees and uh, not too windy. So, but you know, the tarnish plant bug, it's a true bug and it feeds on the flowers and that the, uh, the sticks its proboscis in the flower and that causes the dimpling on the fruit. Uh, as I said, we have, had, we have not had good weather for it uh, so far. Um, maybe this coming weekend, maybe Sunday, it's gonna get warm and, and they could become more active. Uh, I don't think tarnished plant bug is, is as big as a problem as it used to be many years ago. Um, but I know that in, you know, in high density trees, when there's just you know, lots of fruit and all pretty close together, uh, tarnished plant bug can be a problem. 
and putting on a pink insecticide can help. Uh, I did want to let you know that it, in one orchard, I saw quite a few pear thrips, like two to three uh, pear thrips per cluster, per tight cluster. So these are tiny little insects. They're like, uh, what, not, even, not even half an inch long and slender. And you really see them when you open up. You can see them if they're there when you pull open the, the cluster. Um, this kind of alarmed me. I think it was back in the late 80s that we had problems with pear thrips, like one or two years. I remember Ron Procopy was still around. And uh, anyway, it was quite a while ago. And I see them, I'll see a couple every year, but I was kind of surprised to see, you know, two or three consistently per cluster in this one orchard. And so I uh, recommend they, that uh, the growers spray. The pear thrips, they, they feed on the buds and um, they can abort the buds, I think is mostly what they do. Uh, they can lay eggs and then those, the, new, the nymphs that hatch, I've, I've read that they can feed on fruit. I've never seen that damage, but I guess they can cause a rusting on the fruit. As again, I've never seen that damage. Don't really want to. Um, yeah, I already just said this. So um, we've got LEPs that we really don't have to worry about right now unless you're doing mating disruption. So this is just kind of a, a review of what Jaime had talked about last time about you know, the oriental fruit moths, they're gonna start flying around bloom. Uh, coddling moths, they, they start flying around petal fall. And then oblique banded leaf rollers about three weeks after that. And when we're attacking the LEPs, what we wanna do is attacking them, trying to control them with insecticides, what we want to do is um, we're generally trying to kill the, the newly hatched larvae. So we get the, the, the moths flying, then they, you know, about a week later, they're laying eggs, and a little bit, little bit of time after that, those eggs start to hatch. So just to give you an idea of what's coming up. Oh, I, also dogwood borer is something that you can take care of pre-bloom. Uh, dogwood borers are these the larvae of the of, uh, clearwig moths, and they feed on the bark, uh, and they can, you know, create they can create quite a mess, and of course they can stress the tree if there's many. So this is the the bark has been pulled pulled away here, um, but sometimes you'll just see like frass that looks like this coming out of the bark tends to be low down on the on the trunk, pretty close to the ground or within the lower couple of feet from the ground. Um, so our, what, what uh, works very well is the Lorsban that you can spray once a year. Uh, it's still legal to spray Lorsban. It's not going to be around for much longer. Um, and it's a restricted use insecticide, so not everybody is able to use that. Uh, another recommendation is uh, for an insecticide is a sale, and that can be applied, you know, sometime between now and, and uh, the middle of June when the, uh, the adults start flying again. So a sale is another product that can be used that does not, it's not restricted. So it might be a, a better choice for some people. There's also things you can do, you know, putting that latex paint on the lower parts of the trunk, um, you know, from about two feet down to the base, to the soil line, that can help discourage uh, dogwood borer moss from, from laying eggs. And then also keeping weeds away from the trunks and removing, re removing guards, uh, those, especially those twist around guards that can uh, uh, you know, be mouse guards for the trunk, but then the, the dogwood borer adults will get underneath there and be nice and protected and lay eggs and cause damage. All right, I think, oh, yeah, so right now that there are larvae underneath the, in the bark, and they'll be percupating soon. And I talked to you about those pesticides. Okay.